Yeah, so how is everything? Good Christmas, good New Year? Yeah, it's been a busy start to the year, well without end. Well Without End is the second book from the author Ken Follett. It was a great journey for me, and a really ex exciting uh, path and character. He's quite a kind of nasty guy, really. No! Silence! The Priory has jurisdiction over all bargains agreed at the Fleet Fair. As sacrist, I have the authority to decide, and you must all agree with my decision. But when you're filming, I suppose it's all shot quite differently. So do you get a kind of sense for that rise in your character? Because I'm guessing you might shoot bits later on in the series, earlier on than... Yeah, well, the, the whole series is um, eight hours long, and we jump from episode one to six to eight to three to four, depending on location, really. So you have to work out the journey beforehand and really understand where you're going. Is it love? Or passing fancy. Greetings, Mother Cecilia. I was just admiring the Lord God's gifts. And in terms of the sort of the book and the, the show, is it almost, do you prefer not having that amount of research to do? Because does it take away any of your own sort of personal approach to the role? Because when there's so much written about a character, yeah. does it not give you much leeway? With research, I, I try and do as much as I can. Um, I can't just throw it all away and uh, throw, put it all aside and then just play the scenes for what they are on the day. Do you feel that pressure when going into a project that there's really expectant sort of yeah, people Yeah, there, there is a pressure where people are huge fans of books. You know, I've done a movie Hellboy, which, which had a huge fan base as well. So you feel a real sort of sense of responsibility. Are you going to be okay? How big can it be? I mean, it's quite, a, sort of quite an ensemble piece. I mean, you've got the likes of Ben Chaplin. Miranda Richardson, yes. uh, Cynthia Nixon. It must be great to be on set with quite such a, a cast of such pedigree. I was very, very privileged and very lucky, really. There was some great, great actors, and that was part of the reason why I really was keen to uh, to get on board. I'd never met Cynthia, uh, you know, seen her on Sex and the City, but about that's about it, really. So I was a bit nervous, and uh, she was fantastic, and we all got on. And it was a real international cast. I think in the last five years, we can see now that more American actors are doing television. And as television writing has become much, much better, and as you say, I think it started with The Sopranos. I think uh, you know, TV and film now is really interchangeable. And you mentioned the script. When you receive script, can you tell almost instantly this is just going to work? I mean, for me, when I read a script, I just get excited. If I start acting it or thinking about the character while I'm reading it, then I kind of instinctively know. Is it really encouraging to yourself that, I mean, the likes of Daniel Day-Lewis and Damien Lewis, they both won Best Actors in their respective yeah. British actors. I mean, that must be quite encouraging for someone, you know. It seems like the Americans love the old Brits, yeah. don't they? And I've worked in LA, and they really respect and, and love working with British actors. It's really encouraging that the Brits are sort of holding their own against the Americans when it comes to award season. When you are playing a bad guy, I mean, do you feel, is that, that is, I'm guessing that must be a bit more fun, I suppose. What's interesting about evil characters is that when you're playing them, you don't see them as evil. Excuse me, brother, I didn't mean to interrupt. Shh. What's interesting for an actor is why they do what they do. No one wakes up in the morning and goes, I'm evil. They always have a justification. It's that that interests me, really, of kind of working out why they do what they do. So yeah, the bad guys are always the best. 